this is a reminder video on how to create the afterthought thumb when you're knitting up mittens. I had to figure this out for a test knit. It was a little tricky at first and I wanted to make sure that I had a reminder video for myself for the next time that I use this when it comes across in a pattern. So I've made a tiny little swatch. This was done originally in my test knit course in the round while I was making the mitten. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to do it flat. So what I need to do is start knitting the thumb across the designated stitches that are called out in my pattern. And this is not a pattern. This is just an example. So I've gone in however many stitches that my pattern says to start knitting according to the chart. So for example, if the chart says knit five stitches, that's what I do. And then I will begin to use a bright colored waist yarn to knit across the thumb area. So I'm going to go ahead and knit what would be the thumb area on this little swatch. And I'm going to leave these few stitches alone. And I've made sure to leave myself a pretty good sized tail, about four inches. Now what I need to do to get back to my working yarn so I can continue in pattern because what this does, it allows me to finish the mitten with basically a thumb area fully intact. There's no hole. There's no stitches being put on a lifeline. And then you have to do a backwards loop to basically create a bridge to close the gap and then continue knitting. So it would be kind of like a little hole that's left and you continue knitting up. And this hole is left in your mitten for you to go back and pick up stitches and create the thumb. This will create a flush, flat, knitted mitten. And you have to come back and pull this waist yarn out. So it'll be flat, just like this, when you get past these stitches, no holes. So what I do next, with the waist yarn still, to get back to the working yarn, I need to put these waist yarn stitches back onto the left needle. And that's just a simple slip over. Slipping these stitches right back over to the left needle. Okay, pull that tail a little bit. Now, you can drop the waist yarn, don't need it. And I even have this attached to a full uh, ball of yarn. I don't need to have this cut or anything, I can keep this all fully intact and never have to cut this waist yarn. So now that the stitches are back on the left needle, I will knit this waist yarn according to my mitten chart. If it's color work, I'm going to do the color work row for the thumb right now above these stitches or right on top of these stitches. If it's just one color, that's what I'll knit across. So that's what I'm going to do here is just use one color. So I'm going to be knitting across the waist yarn in pattern. So if my pattern says use one color, that's what I'm doing for this example. And I'm just going to knit right across the waist yarn. If it's color work, I'd be using 
however many colors and I would knit across in pattern with the multiple colors. There's that last stitch and I'm across. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. And stop for a second. So you can see I've created a little row which will become the thumb. So let me go up a few more rows and then I can take this out and show you. It will be kind of loose because the waist yarn is in there. That's okay. Just pull on the waist yarn to tighten things up a little. So if this was in the round and it's all knit stitches, no purl stitches, I would just be going right back around and knitting across instead of doing this purling that I'm doing now. You would just knit all the way to the beginning of the round to get back to the beginning and you would continue knitting over and over and all you're going to see is the contrast knit stitches. Let me get up a little bit higher and then I can take the waist yarn out. And again, if I'm knitting in the round, I would just keep knitting all the way back to the beginning, but this is flat, so I need to purl back. This is, again, just a quick example, quick reminder. Okay, I'm back at the beginning. So when you're knitting your mitten, this is exactly what you want to see. Just a random color row, right where the thumb would end up being. So if you think there's more material down here for the cuff, you're knitting up. And then this is right where your thumb would end up popping out. So let's say, for example, I'm completely done with my mitten. All the way to the very top, the whole thing is done. Now I need to come back and do the actual thumb. So what I need to do first is pick up stitches from this waist yarn area. And it's easy to do it. It's best to do it with double points or uh, two mini circular needles. And what you need to do is pick up the right leg of each stitch under the waist yarn. And then you'll do the same thing on the top. Below and above, you're going to pick up the right stitch, and I'll show you how to do that. Because the waist yarn is so bright, it shows you exactly where you need to go. So if I look at these two legs, look directly below at the two knit stitch legs right below it. I want this little guy right here. I'm going to tighten that up a little. So it's a little bit more clear. 
right there. I'm not picking up the waist yarn. I'm picking up the right leg directly below it. I'm going to skip over the left leg and I want the next right leg directly under the waist yarn. And I'm going to do this all the way to the end. So I'm going to skip over the left, pick up the right, skip over the left, pick up the right, skip over the left, pick up the right, and do this all the way to the end. And you should have however many stitches you put on the waist yarn is how many legs you just picked up. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Yep. Okay. Now, what you need to do is flip this over and you'll do the same exact thing, a mirror image. Let me grab another needle. And you're going to look at this just like you did the first time. You're just gonna flip it over. You can even give your waist yarn a little bit of a tug. They're just upside down. This is the first leg under the waist yarn, and it's the right leg. Right leg, skip over the left. Right leg, skip over the left. Right leg, skip over the left. And you wanna do this for the same amount of stitches that you have in your waist yarn. So I'm just going under and over, grabbing. Under this stitch, over that stitch. Under this stitch, over this one. I should have 10, two, four, six, eight, and 10. So this is what you'll have. Waist yarn in the middle, stitches on the top and stitches on the bottom. And then what you can do is put everything back right side up. Here's the tail. So if I tug on this, I can see where it is. And all I have to do, it's easier if you take a small knitting needle and you literally just pull the waist yarn all out. Highly suggest using a knitting needle if you're not using DK weight like this is. I normally do my mittens and fingering weight. So you would definitely want to use your knitting needle. This is pretty thick, so I can just get my fingernail under it. And even pulling on this, it's not going anywhere. I'm not overstretching stitches or anything. All I'm doing is separating everything. And everything stays right on the two needles that I need to use to knit up the thumb. And just a reminder, once you start knitting the thumb, make sure that you pick up at least one stitch on the far right and the far left to reduce the gap 
that you end up getting just like when you knit an arm back onto a sweater. And I'm just gonna pull that out. And I never had to cut this. So ignore this top needle. This is the thumb hole. Right there is where I would put my thumb and the whole mitten would be around my hand. So what you would do, obviously, you would have your working yarn ready. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull those stitches out and leave them alone. So just as a reminder, let's say this is green as well, or whatever color that you're using for your mitten. You start at the bottom right, but before you knit this first stitch, grab another stitch adjacent to it because you want to try and close the gap. And that's just an extra, extra stitch that you end up knitting with the first one when you get back to the beginning. It's however your pattern is written. So just pick up that first stitch, put it on the needle, and then you would start working your thumb with your yarn in pattern, whatever the pattern calls for. Get to the end, you would pick up a stitch on this side, something like this. Definitely multiple needles is needed. So just remember you would have the two extra stitches on the left and right. And if you need to, you can even do an extra stitch for the next row, but if you find you don't need it, no big deal. You just knit across onto the next row. And sometimes, especially if you're doing color work, remember that if you have a yarn over or uh, the floats, that is okay. You just push those floats down. For some reason, this one got twisted the way it feels. So I'm just going to knit through the back loops to straighten them out. There we go. Just remember you can always knit through the back loops to straighten the stitches out. And if you want, you can also pick up a stitch here. Again, whatever the pattern calls for, put your tail down in the center, and then just continue knitting the thumb until you're absolutely done. you can see the beginning of what would be the thumb hole right there. You just have to imagine more and more fabric being created. And then all of this would eventually tighten up on the left and right side of the thumb. It would be a thumb. So this is a really quick nitty gritty reminder video because I needed it it most likely will make sense to me hopefully it makes sense to anyone else if someone chooses to watch this if it doesn't let me know and when I knit up my next mittens and I get to the thumb part I can always um, record what I'm doing for the thumb in more depth and a lot more clear and take a little bit more time with it, but this is a quick nitty gritty afterthought thumb reminder video.